Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be showing you a lesson from our personal finance masterclass. This lesson is a tutorial for how to budget with mint.com. It's what my wife and I use to do our monthly budgets. I really love the tool. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is another lesson from our personal finance masterclass and the free personal finance principles mini course. Get more information in the link below and let's get on to the tutorial. Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a budget on Mint. When you sign up for Mint, you're going to first have to connect one of your accounts or all of your accounts to Mint so that it can see all of your transactions, which then fall into different categories in your budget. So the first thing to do is on the left hand side, you have your accounts and what you're going to do is click this edit and then go to add account. Now for this example, I've just set up a temporary mint account and added our city double cash card which is a great two percent cash back card that we use and that has transactions for most of our purchases when you log on to your mint account for the first time you're actually going to have a temporary budget that mint has set up for you it includes things like automobile food fast food groceries I've already edited those from my budget because I'm going to start from scratch using my own categories. To get rid of those, you're going to have to click edit and then there's a button for deleting those categories and do that to all of the categories in your budget and start from scratch. So starting from scratch, we're going to click create a budget. Now my wife and I have a variety of categories that I will be plugging in and creating a budget for in this tutorial they're the ones that we use that work for us but of course you might want to do your own and use your own categories feel free to do that depending on what you think is important what deserves to have a category in your budget but make sure that you create categories that everything in your life every transaction can be accounted for because basically what we want to do with this budget is at the end of the month see that all of our transactions fall into some sort of category and that way we can tell month after month what we're spending our money on and there's no transactions that are kind of falling through the cracks. So to choose the categories that you want in your budget, you will click in this little box and start typing the category title. So there's some that we will have to create our, ourselves, which I'll go into in a moment when we need to do that. But for now, I'm just going to create the ones that Mint has already created. So we have one for our housing, our rent, we pay rent. For you, you might wanna do one for your mortgage if you own a house. We separate this from our utilities, which we have a separate budget for. So for us, we're just going to use the mortgage and rent category. And to see which categories Mint already has, you can click this see all categories. And then you have this drop down. You have all these super categories on the left then hovering over the super categories, you have the subcategories. So under home, you have a mortgage and rent category already. For us, we're going to select that as one of our categories and we pay about $1,800. Actually, we do pay $1,800 for rent every month living in SoCal. So you choose your amount that you expect to pay every month and that's something you're going to have to decide how much is it going to be for rent or mortgage you typically know exactly how much it will be but for things like food or extra expenses utilities personal budget health expenses those might be things you have to look back on your previous few months of transactions and kind of see how much you spent each month set your budget see how it goes for a few months and you might have to adjust and then there's a couple more things that you want to do you have to choose when will this happen. Typically you want to do every month because that's what we're looking at, a monthly budget. You could also do an every few months budget. Say there's something like insurance or loans or something that you pay not every month at the same time or utilities, some utilities are like that. You could do one every few months and then you choose however many months this happens. So maybe you need a budget for insurance which you pay once a year. So you would say I spend $1,000 every 12 months. The other kind is a one-time budget. So if you have a vacation that you're going on and you wanna have all the travel expenses go into that one-time expense or a birthday or Christmas or holiday gifts, you might wanna create one-time budgets for that 
specific thing each year so that you can categorize things in that budget and they don't you don't just lump your vacation travel fare into your personal budget if you don't want to do that. So for us, we're just going to say every month. And then the last thing is to start each new month with the previous month's leftover amount. This is if you want to roll over the balance, whether it's positive or negative. This might make more sense for something like restaurants. Say you have a $200 restaurant budget every month. If you spend $150 and you check this box, that means that the next month's you'll have actually $250 to spend, or it will show that you have $250 to spend. But in one month, if you spend $300, the next month it will show you have only $100 to spend. Okay, so that's all the stuff that you need to know about creating a budget. So I'm just gonna go through quickly and create budgets for each of our categories. So we have mortgage and rent. After that, we have utilities. So they already have a utilities category, but let's see where that lands because they have a utilities under bills and utilities, so that's good. Or if you wanted to put it under home, you could. So say I want to put under home, I can create a new category by selecting add new category. Over here I can say add category, and maybe I'll choose home utilities. And they already have these sort of preset new categories that you can add if you want based off of what other people have added to their budgets. So I'll say save, we'll say I'm done. And now we have home utilities in there. And our home utilities are about $150 a month. So this includes electric, gas, trash, water, all of those things that are every month or every other month we pay. So we'll say save. The next one we have auto. So if we click this little button right there on the right with the two arrows, we can see all of our categories. And we're just going to do an auto and transport. And so everything from gas, fuel, parking, if we do have service or parts anything done on our cars it goes under auto and transport and we do this at two hundred dollars a month now i'm just going to go through quickly the rest of our budgets okay so we've added a bunch of categories already i'm just going to walk through a couple more that we've created that really have helped us and what we call these are personal shared personal fill for me and personal isabel and so these are new unique categories to us. We put them under personal care. You can put them under wherever really. This could be under miscellaneous expenses, but we put them under personal care. So I'm going to create a new category for personal fill, personal Isabel, and personal shared. And why we created these categories is because while you could go in and categorize every single thing every single expense of yours as uh, something different a gift uh, something for the kids something for the pets something just some general shopping books clothing hobbies you see they have so many categories everything you could imagine it's a little bit overwhelming and for us we just wanted to lump everything together so for our personal shared account we start the month with 200 extra dollars and this is where we put basically anything you get at the store that we would use together. So cleaning supplies, or if there's a birthday party and we have to get a gift, we'll put it in personal shared because it's not necessarily my expense. It's not necessarily Isabel's expense. It's our expense as a couple. And so we have this personal shared category. And then on top of that, we each have our own personal budget. So these are great because these are budgets that we each have and we each use for our own expenses. And we don't necessarily have to worry about asking each other if we should spend money or buy things because we know that we have a certain amount of, of money allotted to us each month. Now, this can go up or down depending on how much you want to allow yourself each month. But for example, things that I've spent money on in the past few months with this are like new guitar strings or tickets to a baseball game. So these are the categories that we have come up with. And you can see here, you can easily increase and decrease the budgets by hovering over and clicking left or right, or you can edit the details and you get back to that, this page. But you'll notice that while we have this, some of our budgets have already been filled in, health and fitness, restaurants it's the start of the month so we haven't spent that much money but you notice that under here we have this everything else and this shows that there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been categorized yet so we have to go back to our transactions and actually categorize everything so to do that 
we click on this transactions tab up here and this shows us all of our transactions that we've made with our credit card. So to change the category, you have to go to this category tab and change it. So for example, I just went to the doctor. So this is going to be, I'm just going to put this under health and fitness. I could put it under doctor, but I'm just going to change it to health and fitness because anything under this will show up in the health and fitness category that we've added to our budget. But I just like to make it match the categories of our budget. CVS, for example, this was a personal shared. Big five, this is something that I purchased. I got myself a new hiking backpack. So this was a personal fill object. Sam's Club, this is, we bought gas at Sam's Club. So sometimes Mint tries to categorize based off of what the store name is. And uh, so, and it kind of learns as you go along, it becomes intuitive with your purchases, but for some reason, it always gets Sam's Club wrong, which is makes sense to me because it's not necessarily for gas. So under auto and transport, we have we just put it under auto and transport because that's gas. So after I've categorized all of the transactions for this month and go back to my budgets page, you can see how much I've spent in each of these categories. Auto and transport, for example, I've spent $51. So it's nice and easy to see where we are. Once I start spending more money in these categories, this bar turns yellow and red as we get closer or go over. And then down below, you notice that there's no longer the little thing that shows everything else. I've categorized everything that we've spent money on this month, and this is how we've spent money this month so far. So we're in good shape. We've got a few more weeks to go and a lot of expenses like utilities or mortgage and rent, those come later in the month. Uh, but in general, this is how we do it. Again, I want to stress that you will probably want to customize this for yourself. There might be some sort of things that you want to add to your budget. Maybe you do want an entertainment budget or maybe you do want to separate your fast food from your formal dining restaurants because for us, we just lump everything together in terms of eating out, but maybe you do want to separate those kinds of things, but it's really up to you. I think the main takeaway is that you want to make sure that you have categories for everything you potentially could spend month money on in a typical month. Of course, I mentioned things like maybe there's things like Christmas gifts that come once a year or vacations that you want to create a separate budget for that month, but for your month to month transactions and purchases, make sure you have categories for everything. That's why we created the personal shared category. It really helps to dump everything in there that doesn't fit in other categories. And that really works for us. It can be fun to look at your budget every month if it's simple and easy to do. And hopefully I've made it a little bit more clear on how to create a budget on Mint, how to categorize things, how to recategorize things that weren't categorized properly, and then how to look back at your budgets afterwards to see if you went over or under. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another video. So I hope you liked that video. This is just a sample of the type of video you will be getting in the free personal finance principles course and the personal finance masterclass. So click on the links below if you want to enroll in either of those classes. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in another video.